in this video I'm taking you for a wander around Havana, Cuba. I'm here finalizing details for an upcoming tour and a lot of my time is going to be searching out old buildings that we can bring dancers and different performers to to do some on location portrait shoots. This is going to be a really fun one. Stick around. For this trip, I'm taking a really basic kit. I stopped by B&H Photo Superstore in Manhattan. I always love visiting her there. They have everything out that you can touch and try and experience for yourself. It's not just brand new cameras. They also have a huge used department, film, lighting, tripods, bags, all of that good stuff, and even some video game setups amongst the TV department. If you've not been, check them out. For this trip, I'm taking along the Ricoh GR3. This is a fixed focal length camera that's super popular with street photographers. It's essentially a super primo point and shoot camera with an excellent quality lens on it for about $900. B&H have the full range of accessories for this. You can check them out on their website if you can't make it to the store. As you've noticed, I tend to find animals in every city, but there's loads of different puppies around Havana. So for me, it was heaven, including these ones that I see a lot in Peru, but haven't actually seen in Cuba much, the hairless dogs. They were play fighting. This is actually a father and child. And this one is actually, I think my favorite shot that I got with the GR3. Now, whilst I'm here for work, this really is the essence of the Wanderer series. We were going from location to location, trying to scout out what might be good to bring a group to, and I really had no idea what I was going to come across. So we were just seeing scenes, seeing interesting things on the street, and grabbing shots as we wandered around for about a day and a half with the Rico. You probably notice it doesn't have a flash or a viewfinder now, but it's quite pretty, no? Yes. Okay, bye. Not a fan. Okay, folks, heading out for day two now with the GR3. Have to say, the handling of it is fine. Startup time, I missed a couple of shots because it's not quite as instant as I would like, but overall, it's just kind of an all in one, easy to use kind of setup and definitely pocketable, which is, I think, the appeal it has for a lot of people. Nothing really stood out as super impressive, though. But when I got it back and looked at the files on the computer last night, I am actually really impressed with both the sharpness of this lens and the contrast and tonality that it's picking up. So yeah, today we're gonna head out, I think to central Havana to have a wander around there. We'll see where the day takes us. We checked out a bunch of different boxing gyms, both indoor and outdoor, so we can have options in terms of the kind of lighting and setups that we might want for the groups.
wandering around Havana is such a pleasure to do street photography. There's so much to see and all of those classic scenes that you're looking for as a street photographer are here. Hello. The colonial buildings. Hello. And the decay, really friendly locals. Honestly, don't be afraid of being hustled all the time. There is the risk of that here, but so many people just want to say hi and Happy New Year and Merry Christmas. It's really nice. One thing about this camera being a $900 compact, I'm trying to call it a premium compact rather than a point and shoot. I really miss it having a viewfinder. A camera like this, I personally don't love framing like this. There's times where that's handy to be able to get different angles. But for example, we're filming right now with the RX100 Mark 7, 24 to 200 zoom, built-in flash, pop-up EVF, and a tilting screen, and 4K video, and, 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 and. Admittedly, it's not a APS-C sensor, but you're getting a whole lot for about $100 more. So for me anyway, I would really like this to have a built-in pop-up EVF to be able to use. Dominoes is really fun to shoot and not uncommon to see in a lot of Hispanic communities actually all around the place. And like every city in the world, Havana does have a Chinatown. So we went to check it out, get a couple of shots on the street there too. So we're in Chinatown here. The only real sign is Chinatown is the giant arch and one Chinese Cuban association building that had a sign for Chinese restaurant in it. That's all about it. But there's this sculpture which reminds me of an artist from Camaway. I think her name was Jimenez or something like that. Beautiful work, this kind of a character. But this one looks like it's signed by Zhu Hong Fei. So I'll have to search and see if that's a Chinese sculptor who might have created this one for Chinatown riding a skateboard. Funny thing, this keeps finding faces on statues and carvings really easily, but not so much actual faces of people moving. Maybe just me, but this kind of looks like a nerdy Steve Carell from the American office. So there was actually a fair bit to shoot in Chinatown. Lots of people on the street, a handful of restaurants, some different signage and murals and that kind of thing, and a wushu temple. So I was totally wrong. There's a lot more to Chinatown than one little street. We found a bunch of restaurants. Haven't seen any Chinese other than my wife though. This, uh, I'm not sure if it's a temple or a restaurant, but let's have a look. And a cat! So it looks like it's not a temple, it's a restaurant, but, oh! Actually, it looks like there's a bunch of restaurants here. So it turns out that this food alley and all of the restaurants there and a lot of the restorations that have been going on were part of the 500 La Habana, which is the celebration of 500 years of the city's history. It was founded in 1519, so they had these huge public works to get everything nice and spick and span for the anniversary. And I believe the Spanish royalty came over to celebrate it as well. Now this next selection are all completely straight out of camera JPEGs using the standard neutral black and white preset. I was of course shooting in RAW as well, but these ones show you what you get straight out of camera. Overall, I've really enjoyed shooting with this, although Wanderer isn't really about a camera view. One thing that I noted, and you, you also can't blame a camera for not being what it just doesn't state it's going to be. This is a fixed focal length premium compact camera. I, however, prefer using different focal lengths when I'm shooting street. So whilst this is probably my most used focal length, there are some shots that I think work better, wider or longer, and cropping in post is not the same thing. So if they were to bring out a GR4 that had 
say three different focal lengths rather than a full variable zoom. So like at 24, 28, 35 or 28, 35, 50, I think I would definitely buy one. I think, think along the lines of like a Leica Tri-Elmar lens, the weight or the mate lens, something like that I think could really open this up to a much bigger audience and help justify the premium price tag that this is commanding. Hope you enjoyed this video, folks. As I said, I borrowed this one from B&H Camera. If you're in New York, go in and check out their Superstore. It's amazing. You can see why it's called the Superstore. They also ship just about everywhere as well. So you can check them out. They have the full range of everything. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video, and I hope you've enjoyed it.